Multitasking has been praised in so many ways over the past few years, and I'll be the first to admit how proud I was of being able to juggle multiple tasks at a time. Hello everyone, and if you're new here, welcome to the channel that aims to bring you everything from minimalism, sustainability, self-care, and self-development. I distinctly remember the first time I was consciously multitasking. It was 2011 and I was getting ready for work. I had ironed my outfit for the day and headed into the kitchen for breakfast. Placing my food in the microwave for 30 seconds and then realizing I have 30 seconds to do something else. And so I did. And I was so proud of myself for realizing that I can accomplish so much by doing that. Utilizing waiting time between tasks, I started optimizing everything I did and making the most of all the time that I had during the day. Weekends were never for rest. They were about getting the most number of errands and fun jam-packed into them. I saw nothing wrong with this. In fact, I was so proud of how much I was able to get done. I felt like there was always time to get things done and no time for excuses. Getting the most done in every moment as efficiently as possible and not knowing how to sit back and relax and also not understanding how people would say that they don't have time for things. I was never present and always thinking about what's next and this trait soon became an anxiety inducing one. Contrary to what I was trying to achieve, this started making me feel like I don't have time for anything. Probably because I was focusing on all the menial tasks and neglecting the bigger ones that would take more time and require more patience and mindfulness. Multitasking seems like a great way to get a lot done at once. But research has shown that our brains are not nearly as good as handling multitask as we'd like to think they are. In fact, some research suggests that multitasking can actually reduce productivity by 40% because your brain can only do one task at a time. When you try and do two things at once, your brain lacks the capacity to try and do both tasks successfully. Research shows, in addition to slowing you down, multitasking lowers your IQ. I remember when I was at university and my friend had come to stay over. She was so shocked at how much I had managed to get done the next morning in the time that she had gone to the bathroom to brush her teeth. I thought nothing of it, but I did realize that I had the tendency to want to get things done quicker than most people and make it happen. I also remember when I was on campus, something that would frustrate me the most was having to walk from lecture to lecture and being stuck with someone who would walk slowly. There were certain people I would just avoid walking with because of their slow pace. After all these years of being on the go and busy being busy, ticking off tasks on my to-do list, but feeling like I've not accomplished much, I now realize it's time to slow down and be mindful and present. It has taken a lot of practice and don't get me wrong, there are situations that require that sense of urgency and go, go, go attitude, but not always. I was always aware of the benefits of meditation on paper and for about a decade, I put it off because I felt I did not have the time or that I was not reaping the benefits when I did try. Also, just sitting was something I wrestled with and it was something very uncomfortable to do. And many people who I would suggest meditation to would tell me the exact same thing, that they can't quieten their minds and bodies and this bugged them. Even the greatest of monks aren't able to do this. And the point of meditation is not to become good at meditation, but rather through the act of consistent meditation to become better at life. Over the years, I've tried every single meditation out there, figuring out what works best for me and having to change it up every now and again, but I can finally say I've started to see the results. For some, these benefits may not be instant and may only be reaped over time. It's a gradual shift, and this is the reason most people do not stick to it. If you study the habits of the most successful people in the world, you will find that most of them have a common habit, and that is meditation. And if you say you don't have time, this is the best time to start meditation. Otherwise, you'll end up being burnt out, or even worse, passing out like Ariana Huffington did from exhaustion. And by the way, she now swears by meditation. 
There are so many types of meditations out there and all I can say is that you try them out and find the one that works for you and this will serve you and your life better. Slowing down and taking this time for yourself will help you create momentum in the areas of your life you require. I found this very hard to believe initially but that's what happens when your body, mind and soul are not synced. And now I beg to differ. Take it easy on yourself and make time for mindfulness. That was a mouthful, but I hope it was useful nonetheless. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to hit the like and subscribe button. And until next time, be the change you want to see.